Primordial Radio. Primordial Radio, my name is Pete Bailey. Delighted now to uh, welcome Sully from Godsmack. Dude, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Really good, man, really good. And I was listening to your new album earlier today, Lighting Up the Sky. Uh, it's, uh, it's out today as you are listening to this now. And there's a bittersweet feeling about this. I kind of wanted to check in on this before we sort of went any further. And I was double checking and wanted to make sure on this. So is this the last Godsmack album? Like, because I think you said that last year. Do you still, are you still feeling the same way? Yeah, I, I, I think this is the last full body of work people will hear from us. It just seems like time for that to happen. So yeah, it seems like it's, that's the decision that's been made. Was that like a gradual thing that you sort of realized over time or was there like a epiphany, sudden realization at three o'clock in the morning? No, I, you know, it, it wasn't planned this way when we started the process of writing and recording this record. It just kind of evolved as we were having our discussions in the studio and hanging out. You know, we're all really good friends, so we do spend a lot of time together when we're together. And, you know, just through some random conversations and as we started to talk about shows and what songs we'd play, uh, not only from the catalog, but from the new record and trying to identify what we thought the singles would be off this new record. You know, we started realizing that we're, we're now at a point where, you know, we have 26 top 10 singles and 12 number ones. And I always like to try to be a fan myself. And think from a fan's point of view, and I, you know, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but when you go see your favorite bands, you know, do I really want to hear Aerosmith doing their new record? I mean, yeah, I, I think it's cool they have a new record, and maybe there's a song or two that I might like on it. But I'm going there to see Dream On and Walk This Way and Same Old Song and Dance and Train Kept a Roll, and so, and if they don't play those, you're bummed out, right? So it's kind of one of those things we started thinking, well. By no means are we comparing ourselves to Aerosmith, but uh, but we do have this fan base and we have this incredible history and, and catalog of, of hit songs that they've crowned to be their favorites. And we can't not play those. And so even if we pull three or four more singles off this record, which is very doable because the material is there, we're going to be at 30 top 10 singles. I mean, that means we could play... 15 songs a night and do back-to-back -back nights in a venue and never play the same single twice, let alone the deep cuts. So, you know, we just started having this kind of real life conversation about what, why do we do what we do? And, and when do we honor the promises we made to ourselves a long time ago and understand when we've arrived? Uh, Cause some people, you know, they want, they work their nine to five jobs and they want a nice house with a white picket fence and a dog and a truck, you know, and then they get that. And then all of a sudden they want a car and then they want a bigger house and, you know, it just never stops. Yeah. You know, so it's like, at what point do you go like, Hey man, I've, I've done really everything I wanted to do in music and I love what I do, but maybe now it's time to just start honoring the catalog and going out there and building a greatest hit show and, and, and realizing that we've arrived and, and we're, we're happy where we are. How does that make you feel as, a, as an artist, as, as, as a creative person? Because a lot of bands I've spoken to over the years, whether they're five years in, 15, sometimes you know, 30, 40 years in, they all seem still to have this itch to scratch. So do you, do you think in a year or two you're going, oh, I... I mean, I suppose you don't have to do an album to put out a single here and there. So is it more thinking this is the end of the album or, and perhaps maybe you'll put out the odd song here and there? Because I can't imagine you would just go like, I don't want to be creative anymore. Well, I, I will say that, listen, if anyone knows anything about me in my life, I've started music when I was very young. I actually started taking drum lessons at three and a half years old. My dad's a musician. He's a trumpet player. My great uncle was a famous composer in Sicily. Music runs through my veins. So music will always be in my life. And to scratch the itch, there's no better way to scratch it than the reward of all the hard work you do to get out on stage and play and entertain live. And that's really what I enjoy the most. Um, 
But I always think about a quote Tom Hamilton from Aerosmith said a long time ago where he said, you know, music is something I've always wanted to do in my life, but it's not everything I want to do in my life. And that made me really think, you know, I, I've missed a lot of years watching my daughter grow up. I've missed a lot of family events. Um, you know, we dedicated our lives the last three decades to the road, even more than that, really, because before Godsmack even formed, you know, we were in other bands playing out in the club circuits and being out on the road doing that stuff, trying to get the deal. So it's been a huge part of my life, my whole life, actually. And, um, you know, listen, if there's one thing I know now for sure about life is that I don't know anything, <laughs> you know, and whenever I think I have life figured out, it humbles me very quickly and throws a curveball at me. So you can never say never, but it feels like the right time to kind of end this chapter and maybe start a new chapter in our career and start looking forward to this kind of greatest hit show, Sunset Years. Um, and, you know, when we have that itch, we can always call each other and go out and run some shows and enjoy the music that we've written over the years. But to, to come off the road after grinding for two, three years, supporting an album and a tour, and then go back into a studio and dedicate another six months to a year to creating and mixing and mastering and delivering and artwork and photo shoots and videos. And it's like, oh my God, it's, it's a lot of work and time flies by. And I think as we get older, we start to have a reality check on our mortality. Did you suffer burnout at all just from the whole music industry at, at large? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, I, there's been plenty of times where I've burnt out, you know. Um, in, in a whole, again, I, I just think it's, uh, it's relieving to kind of take this approach now and have this burden lifted from us where we can just go play music again because we love music and not because we have to and not because we have a responsibility to deliver more and more and more content and then that just never ends oh and that's getting worse today as well with bands because it's not just about the music you got to be doing all your youtube and the bands now you know it's tiktok and everything i i i genuinely feel for any band starting out today because they have to do so much on top of just being a band yeah and there's a lot of bands too that have much more veteran status than we do you know the Aerosmiths, the rolling stones the metallicas the food fighters some of those bands, you know, it may be in their blood to the point where, you know, they obviously with the Stones, I mean, what are they, 106 years old now? It's like, that, you know, they're, they're never going to stop. I mean, they're going to probably die in a road case. Um, I don't I don't want that for me in my life. I, there's other things that I want to enjoy and the things that I want to enjoy and some of the guys in the band really love are the simplicity of life. And that's the stuff we've been deprived of our whole lives, right? So most people just work their jobs. They get up, they make their kids breakfast, they go to work, they come home, they spend time with their family and do the things that they do. And this life that we live is kind of a fantasy life for them, right? It's not really a reality. They see that as just like a whole different kind of lifestyle where we look at the simplicity of their lives and go, those are the things that we crave. Those are the things that we'd like to spend our time doing. And that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so let's just have a quick run through of the new record then. So lighting up the sky. So uh, 11 tracks. And the, the thing actually I really appreciated most as I was listening to the album earlier today was just a sense of catchy songs. I think the way in which the rock and heavy metal music has evolved over the years is it sort of pushed out a lot to the extremities uh, either side you know some some bands you know much more on the poppy side a lot of bands you know very much on the extreme side but I was, I was listening to your album today and going like this is just a great catchy you know hard rock metal album and I actually think that can be that's an understated thing in terms of like how difficult that can be to achieve to just write a great catchy song um, but with it being five years between albums and obviously everything you just you know, talked about there. Was this a difficult album to actually put together and sort of finish and go, it's done? Well, it's, I got to tell you, is, is in depth as this record is, and as, as much as I've enjoyed listening back to this album, it's really looking back in hindsight. I, I don't know 
how it came together because for one, we were just coming off the Legends, the Legends tour, right? The When Legends Rise tour. And we were going to take some, a little bit of time off anyways, and then dive right back into it because we ended in the fall or winter of 19 and then then COVID hit, right, in 20. And so the world shut down, and, but yet we were still in work mode. So we went right back into the studio and we just started grinding away. And then we realized, what are we doing? Like, why are we in such a hard year? <laughs> Even if we get this record done in three months, it's not coming out. We're not going to be on the road anytime soon. This thing is a mess and it's going to take a while to clean up. So when we had that first thought, we really were like, hey, see it when I see it. Let's not do this right now, but let's focus on coming up with some really strong ideas. And I told the guys, all I'm looking for is big, fat riffs, big, beautiful melodies. I don't know what I'm going to talk about yet on this record. I don't know what I'm going to lyricize about, but I wanted every song to be quality and not quantity. And I wanted it to be a possible single. So we had this luxury of time to be able to go fishing for just those songs. So when we had an idea, we would call each other up and we would go into the studio and we'd work through it and record it. And if it was great, it would would be put in one folder. And if it didn't work out, we weren't going to like sit there and grind on it for three months. We threw it in the trash can and we'd go see it when I see you. And when the next song comes up, it comes up. And because of that, it really created like this, 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 this catalog of like, for at least for this record of all these like best of the best kind of songs. Right. And I don't know where they came from at times because I just remember thinking that, um, it was almost channeling from somewhere else. Like I, you know, we, I, the only way I can describe it is we don't, we can't all be heart surgeons, right? We can't all be actors. We can't all be musicians. We can't all be uh, carpenters or architects, right? We're, we're all kind of put here and we, we have this like something that's wired into us that, that we do really well. And, and I'm really blessed that music was the thing that I was chosen to do. So where these melodies come from and these ideas is really a mystery of the universe, right? They come in, like Keith Richards said, he's like an antenna, right? He gets these ideas and they just, his job is to just get them out there and, and process them, document them and, and do the best version of that he can and get it out into the public. And that's how I feel it was with this. This record really kind of wrote itself. And, um, and when I listen back now, I go, wow, something really special happened here, but it was almost effortless to be honest with you, because we had that luxury of time again to just sit back and wait for the lightning bolts to hit. Mm, and that sort of sense of relief, I guess, as you knew as you were going through the record, there wasn't that pressure of, well, if it doesn't work out, you know, this or that, we've got to do another single. It's like, well, no, nope, this is it. And, you know, after that, I'm going to enjoy my my greatest hits, you, you know, sunshine years and uh, and all of that sort of thing. Um, it's actually, to be honest, this has been a, you know, a really fascinating uh insight into all of this because i i have come across so many bands who have just worked themselves quite in, in some sad cases to death uh and i think many bands struggle to get off the hamster wheel after so many years uh in in music and yeah i've seen it with with bands and you know label folks and all of this sort of thing um and so i actually think it is a it is quite refreshing to see someone certainly of your stature to go you know what i'm just gonna look after my after myself because i feel like the music industry at times it can be uh unforgiving is the word i think that i i i would use it's the perfect word it they they will not as long as you go they will not stop because why would they this is their nine to five jobs their job is to find bands get records out there and sell albums. That's what a record company does. Their job is to sell records, but they will not, they won't lighten up ever if you don't allow them to. So you have to kind of set a standard, excuse me, at some point and be able to control that. Right. So, and we've done that. See, so that's the thing. It's like so many people are just like, why, you know, we feel like 
Like you guys are at your top of your game and you're writing the best stuff you've ever written. And, and I hope that's true because what better way to go out than on top? And I really, you know, I'm really hoping that that's the case for Godsmack. Mm-hmm. So we know where Godsmack is, is is at and what the sort of future is going to look like. Would you ever, are you, are you considering maybe doing a little bit of solo stuff here and there again, just to scratch a couple of itches? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'm sure, listen, I'll, I, like I said, music's in my blood. I'll always play music and I'm always going to create. I sit at my piano almost every morning with a cup of coffee and I just noodle around and I just play. And sometimes songs develop and I just, you know, put them in my journal for what, for whatever it's worth. And when I have enough of those, I create a solo record at times because there's so many other kinds of music that I also enjoy besides hard rock music. But with Godsmack, you know, we've learned what we are, what's expected of us, who we are as a band, what we're supposed to sound like. And although we try not to have a ceiling over our head, and it's why songs like Voodoo and Serenity and Under Your Stars and on this new record, Truth, um, has come out, um, we want to be able to just put out the best music that we can. So, but, but we also have a lane that we try to stay in, right? But with some broadening. Um, but as far as, you know, writing and uh, creating, I, I, I can't see that I wouldn't and why I wouldn't anymore. I just, I just don't know right now after this record's complete and the touring is complete where I'll be mentally and where I want to be, you know, to not have that pressure anymore. So all we want to do right now is kind of celebrate this moment where we feel we put out a tremendous record. I, I, I believe in this record more than any other record I've ever written before. I, I feel like it's packed with everything from old fans to new fans. And I, I really feel it's complete. The story it tells feels complete. And, you know, this record ends where the first record begins. So I, I don't even know how we would top that one. I can completely understand where you come from from that. And I know that you recently just did a tour at the, the tail end uh, of last year in in the UK. And I'm not sure what you got planned lined up, but is it just a case of like, let's just pick up a few dates, see what happens? Because, of course, you know, many of these songs, maybe a couple of you are playing live, but uh, you know, no one's heard them live, I guess. And maybe maybe they won't <laughs> for the most part. Well, we did come through Europe in the late fall of last year and we did uh we started playing surrender because that was released but we couldn't really do much more than that because the record hasn't been out yet and you know how that goes you start playing new stuff and then there's a bunch of bad versions on youtube that sound like crap and you know this record we put a lot of time and thought into how it was mixed and mastered to really take people on that journey and so I, I want people to hear this music like I wanted it to be delivered. And that's why it's important that it came out first, that people have time to live with it. And then, you know, we will come out and we'll start introducing more and more new songs from the record. Nice, nice. So are there any plans then to, uh, to come back to, to the UK? I know you've just been. Um, but I think a lot of fans were really appreciative that you, you that you came back to the UK because it had been quite a while since you've been to the, to the UK prior to coming back uh, uh, late last year. Yeah. You know, listen, as long as there's a demand for the band, we will always come and play music. We, it's, it's what we love to do the most. We love to celebrate the music on stage with the fans and really try to put on a, an amazing show. We've yet to be able to uh, build a big enough audience yet in Europe to do and bring the show that we want people to see that we do here in the States. Um, but it's growing and, and, you know, and we're trying to be frequent enough that the uh, word continues to, uh, to get around and more and more people come because, you know, once we can get, I mean, listen, you know, playing Wembley is one of my dreams. I mean, it, that would be amazing to be able to do that, but we need the audience. So we're hoping that this record, you know, delivers enough for the UK audience, for the European audience in general, so we can come there with you know, with the show that, that we would like people to see and just, you know, have a big, great, fun time with everybody. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Sully, thank you so much for, for taking the time to have a chat today. We're going to uh, play out now with uh, you and I. This is a track that's been getting a great response on the station. So yeah, just tell me a little bit about you and I. Well, you and I starts the album. It's track number one. Um, 
And I think the best way I've been able to describe it is if anybody knows anything about feature films, right? Hollywood films, then they would know that every format is exactly the same. Even though there's a gazillion movies out there that you feel are all different concepts and plots and storylines, but they, the, the format is just the way it is. And it's every great script that's ever been written, which is boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. There's always a, uh, there's always a situation when the movie starts, then there's the obstacles to get through that situation. And then there's a resolution. And sometimes the resolution is even unresolved, but that's the resolution. And I really feel like this record kind of paints that picture in whole, even though it wasn't written as a conceptual record. Um, the album starts with a song called you and I, which is boy meets girl, you know, it was about being inspired and finding someone that you fall in love with, right? And as the record goes on, we talk about the times we're living in. We start to see problems in the relationship. By track number five, you know, you find out what happened in the relationship and things ended because of a betrayal. But then, you know, as the record moves on, then the the back half starts, right? The arc of the movie where you get re-inspired and you start to realize the things in your life that are important, like my band, you know, there was a tip of my hat to the band and on one of the songs that's just thanking them for, for being there for me through all the good and the bad times and allowing me to lead this band the way I knew how, even when I didn't know how and thanking them for their patience when I was arrogant and, you know, things like that. Um, reflecting on missing my daughter and my message to her and the song called Growing Old. And, you know, obviously wrapping up with Lighting Up the Sky, the title track, which is which is kind of a reflection of the whole journey. And if I could talk to myself as a young version of me, uh, what advice would I give young Sully as, as someone with all this experience now? Would I have any regrets? Would I have told him to go slower or faster? And, and would I have even gotten to where I got to today if I hadn't been out there going a thousand miles an hour lighting up the sky? And, you know, and again, as a finale, as you start to hear hints of the first record. So it, it, the whole record is really, you know, one kind of man's journey through life and the ups and downs of, uh, of what we go through. Feels like a letter or like a time capsule to yourself. And when you look back at it, you'll have a point of reflection in five, 10 years. And well, and that's just life itself, isn't it? You'll look back at that and go, ah, oh, that's where I was at in that point in time. Sully, this has been a wonderful conversation, a very honest conversation. As I said, it's been very refreshing to, to hear a different take rather than just going through the never-ending burnout and the hamster wheel that can be the music industry. Uh, you, you're stepping off, man, and you're taking some time for you. So enjoy it. Enjoy the sun, you know, the sunshine years. I look forward to that greatest hits God smack set when you come back over to the UK. Uh, and we're going to play you and I now. Uh, Solly, thank you so much for your time today, my friend. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Primordial Radio.